one day we'll get our time zones right. <laughs> so confusing. You guys are so close and it's so weird that we're in different zones. Yeah. Yeah. So hi everyone that's joining. Just give us a little bit, little bit uh, to get everybody in the room. I'm so excited about today. All right. So we will give everybody hi Cam. All right. Okay. So it is three after 10. I'm going to go ahead and start. I am so grateful to have Meredith on today with us. Um, Meredith is actually in uh, one of, a large agent in one of the market centers that I uh, have happened to be the operating partner of. And so I know Meredith on a, a very good level and it, she is such an impressive woman. Um, I don't want to say too much about her. She is from the town of Chillicothe, Ohio. I'm going to let her introduce yourself, herself um, and uh, tell us, everybody, uh, who you are, Meredith. Okay. Well, thank you for having me, Kelly. And I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, I've been following along, and this is like a really incredible group um, that gets a lot of valuable content of a lot of different agents. So I really appreciate the opportunity today. As Kelly said, I am an agent in a small town called Chillicothe, Ohio. If you're not familiar with um, Ohio or Chillicothe, it's about an hour south of Columbus. So that's like our big city. Um, but Chillicothe is um, about 27,000 people. Um, so a pretty small town. I've been in real estate for about 16 years. Um, and I've been with Keller Williams for about a year and a half, I think. Um, and obviously that's where Kelly Ann and I have connected, which has been incredible for our team and our business since then. So um, I do have a team of two full-time buyer's agents. Um, and then we currently have two junior agents in training. We have a full-time marketing team of three that work in-house and we have an administrative assistant and a transaction coordinator. So that's kind of our team in a nutshell. And then I'm basically the listing specialist at this point, so. And you have a loving husband and tell us about your family. Oh, okay. Well, I do have that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have, I married, my husband, Andy also has, is a business owner in Chill Coffee. Um, he is owner of Tomlinson Insurance, which has been in his family since 1853. So we have a lot of strong ties to the community in that sense as well. Um, we do have three children, um, ages 12, seven, and three. So we're, we're pretty busy wow. in that sense too. Busy mama. So, okay. So what made you get into real estate? So I actually have a degree in fashion merchandising and thought I was going to live out this big, cool dream and live in a big city and do all those fabulous things. Um, but obviously that's not usually real life. So, um, when I moved back to Chillicothe, which was not in my plan, um, my job required a lot of commuting to Columbus, which is a larger city and it just wasn't feasible for our family lifestyle. So my mother-in-law was actually a real estate agent in Cincinnati, Ohio, and she's the one that encouraged me to get into the business. Um, I kind of thought she was crazy and, didn't really know what to expect, um, especially going from a full-time, I was running a retail store, full-time management position, salary position to real estate, which is a completely different ball game um, and holding yourself accountable in a different structure. So um, I do owe a lot of credit to her for getting me into the business. And then we actually were business partners for a while, um, about seven, eight years ago. So um, also learned a lot from her along the way. And it was really great to kind of have that partnership and be able to work side by side with an experienced agent and then being able to kind of launch on my own and not even realizing at the time of being in business with her, that was kind of prepping me for what a team could feel like and how important it is to have a team. So. Okay. Okay. So tell me, um, tell me a little bit about your timeline. So you came in, how old were you when you first got into real estate? Um, I guess I was like, I don't know, 23, 24, somewhere in okay, there. Pretty young. Uh, pretty young. Came back to Chillicothe, never wanted to come back to Chillicothe. And like, I really felt like I had to prove myself. And a lot of people looked at me like I was coming in to a small town with very like experienced seasoned agents that have been here for years. And it was just very set in that way. And like, things were always done a certain way. And there was just those handful of known names that have been in the business for years. 
and coming in uh, or coming back and being so young. I don't think a lot of people took me seriously and they didn't really think that I would be able to do much. And so um, for the first year or so in the business, I did follow one of those very experienced agents um, and literally just shadowed her 24 seven for a year, probably made next to no money. Um, but that value and experience and following her and making connections with her and kind of assisting her in a way that I didn't even realize was happening at that time really helped launch me um, into what then just continued to grow from there. So then after a year or so of doing that is when I teamed up with my mother-in-law and I think we were business partners for about five years. So then that was helpful. And again, being with another experienced agent and helping to grow the business. Um, and so I guess, you know, five, six, seven years into the business is then when I went out onto my own and then started developing a team over time. So when did you first start building your own team? How long had you been an individual agent? What did your sales look like? Like, why did you have that purpose or need behind it? I think a lot of people are like, is it time? Like, just so, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. So timeline wise, roughly, I always equate it to when I had children. Um, and so I think I started building my own team probably about eight years ago or so. So it halfway through my current career, about eight years ago. And that came to be, I was on my own at that time and I was growing every year, but I didn't have a lot of good systems in place. And I didn't really know what the rhyme or reason was to it, or I, and I just knew that if I wanted to continue to grow, I needed to get better organization and skill sets and really run it like a business. Cause I don't really think that I had um, to that level. And so coaching is what um, launched me into starting the team. And um, I honestly don't remember how many units I was doing at that time, but I just remember getting into coaching and not really even knowing much about coaching, but just knowing that I needed some guidance and some help. And I remember being on that first coaching call. And then, I mean, so I had been in the business, what, seven, eight years at this point. And one of the first questions he asked me was what CRM you were using. And I was like, what's a CRM? And he literally, you know what I mean? Like I was just keeping a little spreadsheet with, you know, past clients and stuff. So, I mean, really felt like I had been in the business for a while, but then when you go into something like that, feel like, oh my gosh, I'm starting all over. It feels like, um, and so just right. walking through it with him and ha I was having another child at that time. And it was like, when am I going to take that step and make this a full-time career? And also for me too, that was a situation of deciding to make that big decision of, it was always like stay at home, mom, trying to like balance it. I'll be home with them during the day. I'll do my appointments nights and weekends and just try to make it all work. And then realizing that's not effective. And if I really was going to run it like a real business, I had to make that hard decision of hiring full-time childcare and literally going to my office every single day and working and, and continuing to build the business and fill the pipeline. Um, because I knew if I was going to make that decision, that was a financial decision I was going to make that I needed to make sure that I could back that up and continue to stay busy in the business. Um, and so when I did that, that's when I got into coaching. And it, to me, that's a huge investment back into your business that is invaluable. And I highly recommend everybody do that. Um, and then with those conversations with my first coach talking about what the business was looking like and what help I needed first. And that was basically administrative assistant. And then that built into turning that position to a buyer's agent and kind of going from there. Okay. Okay. And so let's talk, I, I want you to back up. So like, I think a lot of people are like, well, I do run a business. I'm an agent. I run a business. So talk that language to me like what is the vocabulary because I think everybody's definition of what running a business like is different so what do you mean uh you started you wanted to run a business for me honestly it was the basis of the basics financially of <laughs> how about a PL? how about using QuickBooks you know and not just like for me it was like just kind of extra income for my family for so long that I didn't really like track it that much you know I knew what was there um but really taking it seriously um starting a retirement plan for myself that I had which I highly regret not doing that from day one um holding myself accountable putting your money back for taxes putting your money into your 401 starting college accounts for my kids 
all of those things that could have been so much further along had I done the right things from the very beginning. And not that I did anything wrong. I just felt like I could have been more financially responsible and really utilize that money. Um, you know, and just also to like marketing, what are you spending on marketing? What's your ROI? Start tracking your lead sources, all of those things, rather than just kind of winging it for so long. I was about to say winging it. Um, so tell me what it was like juggling all that. Like I hear a lot of people, they start it because they're, you know, going from, you know, being a solo agent or an individual agent to running a team or owning a business, like what happened in your life, real estate, family life, like just be vulnerable and authentic with me. <laughs> um, <laughs> as far as making that big, like switching to a team and all of that. Yeah. Um, I would like what just goes on with Meredith, like now, then all that kind of stuff. Um, so when I decided to hire my first employee, which is an, was administrative assistant. Like I knew at that point in time, I was so busy that something was going to give. And that was, um, within my marriage, um, being showing houses 24 seven, um, wanting to have more children, all of those things start mounting up. And I finally realized that if I don't get help in the business, I can't sustain this. I've worked so hard to build this business. I didn't want to go backwards, but I wanted to maintain the momentum. Um, and so I just knew that I had to figure out a way to keep pushing forward without losing that gain, but still being able to have help and give up some of that, some of the, the income, you know, that wasn't as valuable to me, right? So if I could have help and I could have some of my personal time back with my kids, I was okay to give that up because I knew that we could only grow from there and I was going to have a much happier home life that was starting to struggle a lot. So mm -hmm. that was the biggest turning point for me of making that big, it was very scary for me to hire my first person because I had never, to me, that's part of building the business that I honestly knew nothing about mm -hmm. um, and what that looks like and being responsible for someone else's income. Mm -hmm. was very scary to me because before it didn't really matter to me. Like I always knew I was okay and I would be okay. Um, but making sure that I knew I had to take it seriously if I was responsible for other people. I love that. And thank you for being real. I, I wanted y'all to really hear Meredith's story in the beginning, because I think sometimes we look at the number one agent in a town or someone who is freaking knocking it out of the park. And we think everything was so glorious and everything was perfect and that they have everything figured out and that things at home are perfect. And if we're all being real um, with my myself on that train as well is they get very out of whack. Um, and and we really have to, we, we have to like get a helicopter view and be like, how do we keep going and not go backwards, right? So I wanted y'all to get to know her and and what she's kind of gone through and trials and tribulations over the years to be where she is. And just so the group knows real quick, before I get into the next question, how much, so how many homes are sold in your city a year? I should know that. Um, <laughs> I think around, mm, Kelly. Um, it's around 800, isn't it? That sounds right. Yes. Okay. I think yeah. we've talked about I was thinking I was around 10% of the market share and that's about right. Yeah. Okay. And then how many, so if, if you have 800 homes sold, how many did you do last year? 140. Wow. Wow. So she's got about 10% market share. So I love talking. So I think the struggle is I can't do that. We, I live in a small town. There's not enough market share, Right. And that is what's so impressive when I talk to people like Meredith, they've gone out and tried to and figure out a way in what resources they have and the market share that they have. So, um, so yeah, so we got to know Meredith a little bit. So Meredith, tell me, how did you become like the number one agent? Like, what do you think Meredith's niche is to do a, to have 10% market share in your like you can't get 10 percent market share. Way, you say 10 percent, and that's nothing to me because since i connected with you my goal is 25 percent, and so yes. i'm not even halfway there of where i the minimum standard but yes um for me building my business 
actually came very organically to me. Um, I knew in the beginning when I was starting in real estate, the number one thing that I was told um, and that still holds true in my opinion is get involved in your community and connect with people. And it was, it was before I had multiple children. So I had the time and I did, I was on every board imaginable. I was in every organization. My job and my goal was to get out there and network with people in a genuine way and not to be self-serving, but to really, because I had been away from my hometown. And so coming back, I needed to reconnect and find organizations and um, volunteer for things that I actually was passionate about and that I wanted to be involved in. And then I knew that it would evolve organically. And so, you know, I would chair the United Way campaigns. I was on the Big Brothers Big Sisters board. I was in our local Rotary, in our junior league, all of those things. And that's what helped to build, um, I think my initial base and network of people and finding those people that would, would you know, entrust in me, you know, when they were buying or selling and it started growing from there. And through that, then you have kids and then you connect with those people within the different groups and the parents that you meet along the way. And it's just, it just becomes a way it's just second nature and it's just what you do. And then people learn to, to know what you do and then it just builds from there. But it was very genuine and organic for me and in being involved in my community because I had also worked with so many people helping them move into this town and know that like, it is what you make of it. And if you don't choose to get involved and you don't choose to connect with people, it's not gonna work. Cause I did not wanna come back to Chillicothe. I was very dead set against that. I thought by coming back to my hometown, I was a failure. I was supposed to go to a big city and do bigger and better things. And like such narrow-minded thinking because now I can't imagine living anywhere else because I genuinely took the time to embrace my community and figure out how I could get involved and do something that I enjoy. Um, one of the, the biggest things that um, I'm forever grateful for is um, being a part of starting a nonprofit and having a um, children's museum in our community. So through my business, I would work with families that would want to move into the community. And oftentimes you're that first point of contact and they want to know what is there to do? What do I do with my kids? And at that time, there were not a lot of things for kids to do in our community in that like preschool age before they would get into school. And through connecting with other moms in the community found that there's a need for something like this. And if we want people to move here and we want people to stay here, we have to take it upon ourselves to make those changes and do that. And so I connected with another group of moms. We started a nonprofit. We have a children's museum in our community now that many, many people come through every year. Many people visit our community just to come to that children's museum. Um, when they come into job search and they're touring the community, that's a destination where they'll go and visit. So that was um, a huge undertaking that a group of us took on for three years to build that and to fundraise, you know, $500,000 and to open this and to do the construction. So not only did we start the children's museum, but we also took a downtown building and through some great business partners, renovated a dilapidated downtown building and decided that we wanted to be a part of our downtown revitalization. And so all of these things just start connecting and flowing in a very genuine organic way and meeting so many great people along the way that then just, it's just very organic in my business and our clientele and who we buy and sell with in that way. Yeah. And I love what you said. Like if there's change to be made, you have to be the change. Like you okay. have to make the thing. And I, I think too, um, like when you do the right things in the path of God, like he's going to bless you back. Right. And so that was just your lead generation was giving, giving, and naturally you receive it back. Like, it's not that you had expectations around it or anything like that. It's just, you followed your heart and your passion and he lit something on fire with you. So I really, really, really appreciate that. And I think that um, that is one of the easiest ways is like getting like getting involved, getting involved with your community. What would be one piece of advice you would give the group if they don't even know how to start with that? Is it find, find something that genuinely interests you, whether it's okay. a group or an organization or something in your community that you can connect with. And you're not just doing it because you feel like you need to, or you feel like it's a way for you to network within your business, find something that you, that is genuinely of interest to you and just start with that. 
and get involved and it will just, it will come organically and it will feel natural and right. And it will actually, I mean, it's enjoyable, right? I mean, it just all goes hand in hand. And I didn't even realize as that was happening that I started thinking about it just over the past year or so. And I'm like, my passion and my love for my community just makes sense in what we do every day, like buying and selling homes. That's part of our community. People that want to move to Chillicothe, that's part of community. Like, you know, our kind of didn't really mean to do it, but I think our new tagline is community drives us. And it really does. That. So not only did we, did I have been involved with the community, but through that, we started a community Facebook page called Only in Chillicothe. So at the expense of our team, we have an incredible marketing team where we like to feature a local business every single week. So not only does that provide, we're able to provide valuable content to people in the community and not just saying, hi, I buy and sell homes because anybody can do that, but here's value. Here are places in our community that are local business owners that you should support. Um, And we go in and we feature them and we do an interview and we do videos of them and we do a little giveaway and it's free marketing for that business owner. They pay nothing. Um, and a lot of times local business owners, there is not a lot of in their budget for marketing and things like that. So it's a great opportunity for them. It's a great opportunity for me to connect with them. If I haven't met them before to hear their story, to share their story is why, why they're doing what they do. Why a lot of them have moved back just like I did, why they took a leap of faith and they opened this business and how much they enjoy it. Um, and so I think we have over 15,000 followers on that, which is pretty big for our small town. Um, and so, you know, I hear more and more, that's not an ROI that you can always directly measure, but when I'm getting calls and they're saying, I love watching your videos, I love all of these, you know, what you're featuring and all of that kind of stuff. I'm like, okay, again, it's working, but it's a very genuine organic way that I genuinely do enjoy connecting with those business owners, finding new ones and just helping them really fills me up and allows everything to just come full circle. I love that. If anybody takes anything from today's conversation, go start a Facebook page in your community that says only blank and then go. So I want another thing to think about this is like um, Meredith, probably like me, didn't grow up making dials. Now we do make dials because we know to go from 140 transactions to 300 our lead generation has to change. So if Meredith, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like the 140 units all came organically by you being a big giver to your community. Would you say, would you agree? Yes. And so she did not expect what was like, she had this huge vision, but she knew Meredith knew that she had to go be a giver before she was going to receive. And I think that sometimes as agents, we want to receive before we give. <laughs> and so it's full circle right here is this is how you do it. This is how you do it organically with not a lot of effort other than just going out there and coming from contribution and being a giver before all things. Um, so I love that. Um, and I, I just want everybody to take note, whatever that giving looks like, that's how it's going to happen. Um, so tell me about what's your, what has been your biggest struggle among this journey and how'd you overcome it? Team growth. Okay. Tell me about that. Um, finding the right fits for the different roles. What role do you need when, um, growing the, the agents that was scary for me to add more agents. Cause I have this fear, just like I did with that very first hire eight years ago of like, if I bring on more agents, are we going to have enough business to keep everybody busy? Um, what does that look like? And because my legion looks different as far as like you mentioned, being involved in the community. And like, I would go over this with my coach every single week, as far as like lead generation. And you sit down and you call for two hours every day. And like, finally, like, I think she just kind of gave me a little bit of a pass and said, like, you're having conversations with every, every, with people every day, whether you know it or not, you know, whether it was as we were building the children's museum or connecting with the local hospital and like what I do there, mine is a little bit different, but that's not to say that you still don't need to know the basics and be able to do that at any given time. Right. Like there's still times where scales are low. 
heck yeah. Like I better get on the phone and better go through my potential listings and call them and lead gen and do what I need to do and know the basics. And I did that when I was business partners with my mother-in-law, she, I will give her credit. Like we door knocked, we cold called, we called on FISBOs and like, that can be a very scary thing for people. Um, I was fortunate enough, or like, if you have a partner or somebody you can do that with, that is helpful. But knowing the basics from the beginning of like, when stuff starts to go, you know, sideways, or you need to pick it up, you need to know the basics of the basics. And so in adding more agents to my team, my struggle has been building that program, which I've been very fortunate to connect with Kellyanne and her team and how they run their junior agent program and trying to tailor that to us. Um, but being able to assist them um, and be there for them, but also you have to let a lot of it is up to them. Like here are the tools, here's what you can do. I'm telling you what it will work, but at the end of the day, it has to be up to you to do the work. And I think that's a struggle that I'm still working through um, because it's not always easy and it's definitely not always fun. But if you want to be successful, you have to know how to do that. Um, and so building that junior agent program and kind of a, a cross of ISA versus a junior agent and teaching them to make those calls every day and telling them, I know this isn't always fun, but trust me, if you're in this structure and this rhythm every single day from day one, you will be so much better off in the long run because of all of those people that I followed and mentored under, they didn't always have that structure. And so I did not learn that from day one, but had I learned that, I think I would be even more further ahead because that's very important to have that um, structure and routine every day. Yeah. So you mean you to do 140 units, you need structure? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Oh, I know. I know. Um, so tell me about um, how do you manage it all? Like, how do you manage your sales, your team, your family life, Meredith's personal time? How do Lots you manage it all? Great people, but a lot of great help. Okay. Um, 100%. It 100% takes a village within your business, within your home life. Um, I have a great team. I have a fantastic team right now that I could not be more grateful for who are extremely hardworking and they dig in every single day and everybody helps everybody no matter what the situation is. Um, so I'm very blessed and fortunate to have a solid team right now. And that's, we're in a really hard, I mean, we were at family reunion, like it's a hard time right now um, with staff and employees and it's tough. Um, so making sure you continue to let them know how great they're doing and how grateful you are for them um, and just working together. But definitely my team, 100%. And to be honest, like home life, we have a lot of great help at home. Like we have a fantastic nanny for our kids and that might sound, I don't even like to say that, but it is. And it just those things that I used to feel so guilty for not doing. If you want me to be real, laundry, cleaning, like, you know, having that done allows me to focus when I'm at work and then when I'm at home, focus on my kids. And, you know, if you're, when you're able to have that extra help, it, it's a huge difference in business and personal life. No, man, that is so true. I think that, that I think a lot of people are like, how does she do it all? She must be stressed out. And let's talk about this. So a lot of people will say, Meredith, your life looks too big to me. And I don't want all that stress. How do you feel that your life feels today versus when Meredith was by herself? There is still stress stress, but it's a different kind of stress. Um, and it's much more manageable. And I've definitely learned over these years, I would like to think how to manage it better um, and how to learn to say no to certain things, prioritize more. Um, real estate is, as everybody knows, it, it can be very consuming. It can be very consuming, you know? And I think we talk a lot about, especially as moms, we talk a lot about that work-life balance. Is there ever a balance? I don't think that there is, but I think that there are ways where you can manage it and you can keep it. Um, you know, as, as manageable as you can and prioritize. Um, but yeah, there's still stress, but it's a different kind of stress. And I think it's what you make of it, right? Like people might say too, like, why do you want to grow? Why do you want more? Why do you like, whatever that is? I mean, I look at you and what you've done, Kellyanne. And like, to me, 
like how you're describing me is how I'm like, how do you, like, how does your team do those types of things? And so I think it just depends on the individual and the person as far as like, what are your goals in life? Some people might not aspire to do as much. Some people might be okay being an individual agent and doing X amount if that's what's going to work for you in your life. But I think for me personally, I think I just have that internal drive where I, I think I like challenges. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I look back at like assist, you know, working with that group of people that started a nonprofit. We didn't know anything about a nonprofit. I remember Googling how to start a nonprofit. Like I knew nothing. None of us knew anything, but like we dug in and we did it because we were passionate about it. I become very passionate about real estate. I'm very, very passionate about we don't only we don't only help people buy and sell homeless, but something that we've done to set ourselves apart from people in our community is our level of service to mm -hmm. our clients. And I'm very passionate about I'm very passionate about providing the best level that we can. And I know anybody says that in any business business that you're in, but in our area, we're the only what I would consider real team, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and we offer services from the beginning to the end. You need help clearing out your house. We're going to help you. You need someone to move. We're going to help you. We have a free moving truck. We've got cleaning services. We have handymen, like whatever that is, we want to help you from beginning to end and make that as low stress as possible, because I know it's an overwhelming process, but we do this every day and we can help make that process easier for you, which in turn helps in the long run and building those long-term relationships and making sure that they have that best experience so that they're going to then refer you or they're going to come back to you and whatever that looks like. So We've worked really hard to build that. And that's something that I'm very passionate about is making sure that we're on point and all of those steps. No, I love it. So now, like you've got this business that has showed up every year, like you, every year you've grown. So what do you do? Like, let's talk about your client parties. Like if you follow yeah. Meredith, by the way, Meredith's social media is on point. Like it is something I aspire to be. Like I'm telling you, Y'all go follow her. What's your, um, what's your Instagram handle? Um, Instagram is just at the Tomlinson group. Okay. At the Tomlinson group. So look it up on Instagram. She, her, like she has an on staff social media and it is fire. So tell me about, now I sound like my kid. <laughs> it's fire. <laughs> like these little tag words that my teenage, soon to be teenager says, like it shows up in my vocabulary, but um Tell me about your client parties that uh, you do for your community. Yeah, so that's one thing that we, again, going back to community, it started out with just doing various things throughout the community, and then it turned into, I mean, we do an annual appreciation client party every year, and not only are we inviting our clients from the previous year, we're inviting all of those business owners that we featured on our Facebook page, so we want to bring everybody together, we want to show our appreciation for them. Um, for working together with us and we'll just host an evening open bar food whatever you want it's also a great opportunity to get some client testimonials um, and so we do that too so you, you we're always thinking about how we can give back but at the same time you know how can we you know utilize that time and um, and always create more content like that's a thing for me so when I first started in the business several years ago like I knew that because I was young and no one was taking me seriously, I had to figure out a way to set myself apart. And back then it was something as simple as like professional photos. Like nobody would take the time to do that. Like that was a big thing or video. And so just building, I'm like, okay, that's my thing. I'm going to keep using that. And that's how we're different. And then over time, obviously that's fast forward social media, which we're not even like at the tip of the iceberg and that, but that's something that we have used to really show how we're different and how we can maximize your exposure, what we're doing to um, present your home in the best possible light, what that looks like. And for me, you know, that's an entire team. We used to outsource it. And then we realized we're doing so much content, whether that's content of homes, only in chill coffee, agents giving, you know, tips and tricks and whatever that looks like that we just, literally needed a full-time team. And again, I, I'm very passionate about that. And I chose to make that leap, which was scary and invest back into my business and, um, and bring on additional people to support that. Okay. That's awesome. Um, do you get leads off your Instagram? Yeah, we do, okay. which I was like, you know, so in tracking our sources just over the past year, we've really focused a lot on Instagram um, 
And, you know, when you meet a client or someone calls you, when you ask, like, how did you hear about me? And for people to say, I follow you on Instagram and I just really liked blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that makes me feel a little weird. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not an influencer or anything, but like, it, it does feel a little weird sometimes that, um, that people are following you and they're, they're paying attention because sometimes they you are. just don't know, are people really paying attention? Um, and so, yeah, that thanks to our fantastic marketing team, um, a lot of our lead sources are coming from places like that now. Yeah. I, I wanted to touch on her Instagram because it is, it's on point and I know you get a ton of leads off that. And it seems that I could have a whole set. We could talk all about Insta, but it, it, um, I remember going to a class and it's like, um, I guess my age group is more like Facebook, but like the new upcoming buyers, there's more Insta and Insta is kind of like the new place, but you have to, you have to treat it differently because of the yeah. algorithms and yeah. not how you can put your website. Like it's, we could, we could have a whole series on that. Well, and it's also too, like whatever you put on Facebook. I mean, we've had, we have discussions daily and weekly as far as like, what do people want to see where? And on Instagram, it's not necessarily a place where you're putting like house for sale, but it's people want to see you for who you are or what your team does and more of a genuine, authentic side. And so it's not as easy anymore. It used to be like whatever content you have, you can just put it on all platforms, but it's not that easy anymore. You have to be intentional and you have to be very strategic in what you put out. Another thing that we do in, in addition to all the social media platforms, I don't know if any of y'all are doing um, Google ads. That's like a big thing that we've really gotten into that's been very beneficial. So I outsource to an additional team who we meet with weekly um, that's running a lot of different ads for us in that sense. Um, and that's been very what, beneficial. Okay, so what kind of leads, are, who are you getting? People that are moving to Chilla Coffee? So it's all buyer leads. Um, and recently we um, ex are expanding on that and focusing on buyers and seller leads. Um, and they are, they'll build a landing page that's gonna direct people, you know, when they're Googling directly to you and all that kind of stuff. But they're really great in the sense of, uh, we're meeting with them weekly and they're sharing reports with us because they're able to see on the back end and track what they're, what they're driving to us and track that ROI and it's, it's pretty incredible. And a lot of this, it, it's sometimes a little scary for me of um, the overhead that it can be. But in my mind, I know where I live. No one else yet is going to invest back into their business and take advantage. And um, there's not a lot of uh, like forward thinking, like proactive type agents. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not they're not, they, they, they don't want to put themselves out there. They don't want to be on video. They're not going to, you know, pay for, you know, social media or any of this additional stuff. Um, and so as long as they're not, I'm going to keep maximizing on it as much as I can. And it's working. I remember you telling me, I think I commented, I complimented you on one of your videos and you go, Kelly, I don't even watch them. Nope. So what would you say to that? So more, I hear more and more, I don't I hate the way I look on video. Well, first of all, I heard something years ago, like, that's what you look like. That's so right. get over, that's right. get over what you, that you don't like what you look like on video. Cause I'm sorry. That's, that's what your mug looks like. That's so right. tell me about that. And um, yeah, expand on that. Like, yeah, yeah. so in the very beginning, like it would take me forever to film something and I would make them redo it a million times and I hated it. And I didn't like where I sound or looked or whatever. And then, you know what? Like, I just got to a point where like, I, someone once said, or I learned quickly, like putting it out there. That's all. Just focus on getting it out. There. Get your content. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you look like. Just get the content out there. And so when I shifted to that, I didn't care anymore. I don't watch my videos once in a while. I will, but I don't like, cause I just, you can critique yourself all day long. So I don't watch myself. The team knows they can put, I don't even like, they don't even have to get anything approved by me before. I just know I trust their judgment, whatever they think they should put out of myself or whatever. I'm good with that. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't really, I mean, I would never go live before. I don't care about that anymore. Like stories, different things like that. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable with it and it just takes practice. I think you just have to get used to it. You really do. I know it can be very daunting to be, to do video or to, to go live or whatever that looks like. But 
once you do it a couple times and you get used to it, it it's not, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Um, I, I always used to say like the girls be like, we're down on sales, Kelly, you need to go live, talk about the market. Cause it's like every time I get a couple listings from it. Um, so I think we got to get more and more comfortable because if you don't do it, someone else is going to do it and out okay. and outpace you and probably your client, is, you're going to lose your client to that person. Well, and I'm always watching now too. Like I've always like kind of had this like personal rule of like, I don't like really much pay attention to my competition. We're in a very small town. And if you want me to be hundred percent transparent, it's kind of like, it's just not always fun and people are a little cutthroat. And so I just chose a long time ago to stay in my lane and try to like focus on what I knew I wanted to do and what I thought was best and not focus on this. But more recently, it is interesting to see some people kind of like coming up behind you and starting to do things that you do, which is great. So I'll just push compliment to like say like, yeah, but I'll tell the team, like, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to figure out something else new to do because I don't, you know, so it's kind of a fun challenge in that sense of not looking at it in a negative way, but like, all right, what do we need to do to stay ahead now? So, and you do have to do that. I was, I was telling my general manager the other day, I was like, we've had six years, a six year ride of being this far ahead. People are catching up to us. Yep. So now what can we do to go another six years? That's right. So it's like, you've got to constantly be innovative or and not get um okay with how far ahead you are of the crowd you know yeah. um so tell me like tell me like something advice well I think I might have had, like what's something you would have known you wish you would have known sooner I might have already asked you that but what's no, that? That's okay. okay um something I wish I would have known sooner probably honestly like just a, more of a structured day-to-day -day, uh, with lead gen, I think is super important. Um, I wish that I would have been taught that from the very beginning. Um, and probably running it like a business. Like I said before, like, I feel like, you know, I, my goal now is to just save as much as I can and provide for my kids as much as I can. And I think that's, that's my drive. And, um, yeah, I think I just, I wish I would have like been more structured in the beginning and, um, and really ran it like a business from day one and taken it a little more seriously in that sense. What does structure look like to Meredith? What does that, what does that mean? That means that, um, <laughs> well, uh, so that would be for me personally, that's, um, getting up at 5 AM every day, working out for an hour, uh, getting into the office between eight and nine and then sitting down and being focused, doing that two hours of lead gen um, and just kind of moving your day through that, um, making sure that you protect that time, that just because a client wants to meet with you at a certain time, you have to learn how to navigate around that and you have to protect that time. Um, and that you don't, I know this market is a lot different, but you don't always have to jump and there can usually be a little bit of a compromise with those appointments. Um, and staying true to that. And if you can protect just that like morning time, which I still struggle with, um, I think that's a huge game changer if anybody can do that. No, I love that. I think if y'all been watching all these videos of all these people I've brought on, they all have, they call it the miracle mornings. You can tell that they're all very structured. And if you want to be at that level, that I don't see any other way around it because everybody has about the same common ground. There's no, I, I don't see how there could be. Do you agree? I agree a hundred percent. And I know some people, I mean, I get a lot of comments from people sometimes of like, you're crazy, you're extreme, you're this, you're that. And it's like, I just know what makes me tick. And I know that if I don't get up and get that done before I have to get three kids out the door, like my day's thrown off. Like I could get the extra hour of sleep. That extra hour of sleep is only going to make my day worse. I know what makes me like go. Um, I mean, at family reunion, I was getting up every day and running and making sure like that's a thing, right? And if that's how I can stay focused and like keep myself going, um, that's a thing for me. Even on the weekends, like I have to stay structured and focused in that sense. I love it. I love it. Most every elite leader or someone that's running a business like Meredith has a morning routine and you will see that trend. And um, 
I think that we get into this business sometimes for the freedom and the freedom is what hurts us from being that elite leader. So um, this has been great. I do want to open it up. Does anyone have a question for Meredith? We've got a little bit long, a little bit more time. I want to open it up for questions. Do not be afraid. No questions for Meredith? I'm okay. unmuted, Kelly. Oh, sorry. Go um, ahead. Hey, Meredith. I'm on Kelly's team. I'm uh, an emerging leader. And I love what you said about um, your your morning and how that's how you tick and that's how you do your best. And Kelly can attest to this. Like, she sees when I'm doing well and I'm, I'm on a streak of doing that and I'm not going back. Like I've already got a plan for doing all this on vacation too. And I've always been my best self. Care myself first. And I have instilled like self-care Monday too, uh, because we have the ability to do that. We have the ability to schedule those things and take care of ourselves and make sure that we're our best selves. But uh, one thing that struck with me uh, that you were talking about was your only in Chillicothe and um, I, we are uh, building our Indiana team and I think it would be great to do not just one of the small towns but maybe only in southern Indiana yeah. and uh, because it's like can you hear me okay yes can you yes. hear me? okay and so I wondered like when you set out to do that did you set the expectation that you were going to do it once a week or once a month and have like your first few already scheduled ahead of time because that's the only thing that's really kept me from doing it is is because uh, we've talked about this Kelly did this uh early on in Owensboro kind of um and I, I really want to do that I think it's a great way to connect with the community but I just have I haven't had a plan and I just wondered if you could put some insight into that absolutely yeah we definitely um when we first like launch the idea um, again i was i'm very fortunate to have a marketing team that i could bounce these ideas off of and really help kind of pave the way for that but um we definitely decided like the structure right away it just came very easily and organically of like once a week a business once a week and so what we do is we do kind of front load that and you know we have a great team that helps call those businesses and set that up and I finally did say like, we have to keep this structured because I do have to connect my real estate time and that's what comes first. But we just do like two days a month and we have time slots like those two days. And that's when I go out and film with them. So it's not really that much time off of my plate, you know, like four hours a month. So then you're getting four a month and then you can already like pace that out for the following months. Um, mm -hmm. so that's been our current structure that seems to be going pretty well. And it's like, you know, there were times where it's like, well, they can't do it here or they can't do it. There. Well, I'm sorry, this is a free like opportunity. And if they really want to be featured, like we can't cater to everybody, like this is a free service we're providing. And if they really mm -hmm. find value in it, like we'll be able to figure something out. But I had to make that hard call last year. Like these are the only days and times we're going to schedule and we've got to try to make that work. So we do try to do like for a month for like the following months, if that makes sense. Oh, that's good. Like, that's like, awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I think sometimes we tend to let other people dictate our calendar when really it's it's not like we're, because we're a lot of us like are worried about, we have fear around, you know, oh my gosh, I want to accommodate, I want to accommodate, I want to accommodate. And then that's what can leave us ragged is we're not, we don't give people options. That's right. And people... People love boundaries. What, what I've learned is you, people do love boundaries. You're just not the one holding the boundary. Yeah. Denise, so. if you have any questions, like you're more than welcome to connect with my team or myself. Like I would love to help you, you know, if you need any um, just additional information. Cause I mean, I, like Kelly said in the very beginning, I highly encourage people to do this. Um, I think it's a great way to connect with many different types of people in your community. And like I said, I, I personally feel like it's a great way to provide valuable content um, where you're not just doing the same that every other agent's doing of like, ooh, I sold this or, you know, whatever, so. Yeah, I appreciate it. I will definitely be reaching out. Okay, sounds good. Awesome. Okay, so any final words for our community and uh, for Real Estate Agent to Empire Builder for Meredith? 
from me. Yep. Um, not really. I really appreciate um, the opportunity to, to talk with you guys today and the opportunity with Kellyanne. Um, I think, you know, just overall, my current experience is connecting with the right people, the right leaders. You can never learn too much. You're never too whatever. You can always grow, um, but it has to come from you inside and like what really motivates you and drives you and figure out what you want and not do it just because somebody else is doing it or you think you need to do it. It has to come from a, a place that you really want. Um, and like we've said a couple different times, community can be a big, a big driver. Um, if you're looking to find a way to connect and, and grow your business in different ways. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Meredith. Thank, Thank you, you everyone you. for joining it. us. I appreciate everyone for getting on in this Tuesday morning and everybody go have a great Tuesday. Thanks, Meredith. Thank you. See ya. Bye.